today we're jumping back in. We had a really good discussion last episode uh, about that one person maybe that doesn't fit the culture, that isn't performing well. That one problem child is what we called it. And this week, we're going to keep on that discussion. Here, here we're going to talk some more about what are some practical steps? What are some things that we can do as we interact with these people to uh, really to bring them to the right path? How do we deal with those hard conversations? So let's go ahead and just jump right in. We do not keep everyone because that is not what is best for the team. So when I say what is the best case scenario, I am not saying just, you know, I'm going to tell you three things, but there's only one that's right for you, baby. No, there are all three of them could be right at Jeez. one point in time. Okay. So it's more about what is the right growth based change or growth based decision for your team, for the team at large, not you, not your emotions, not even them, not their emotions. You got to think about what is the team and what is best for the team. This can look so different on different levels, depending on what you do. Okay. So really, I think there are only three things we can do. And I know anytime I say that somebody's going to try to come up with some other thing that it is and whatever, that's fine. But really, I think the first thing is you got that problem child, you get them off the team. Okay. That's one thing we can do. We get them off the team. The other thing we can do is nothing. We just continue with life as it is. Or the third thing we can do is we can dig into the issue. Okay, so I really think it's it's one of those three things. So now when we think about getting them off the team, sometimes this is the best step. Hmm. It just is. And it doesn't mean it's easy. None of these are easy. All of these have an element of risk. Getting them off the team has an element of risk. Continuing as is has an element of risk. Digging into the issue has an element of risk. There's like, I even saying all three of those things, so many moments and stories and I things popped up into my head that we have done all three of these. And all three of these have been successful. And all three of these things have been horribly detrimental. It's just what's happened. So getting someone off the team sometimes is the best step. I would just, my biggest encouragement to this one is really have your ducks in a row. And we'll talk about this in a minute. Have your ducks in a row. Understand the bigger like picture. Have dug into the issue. Had the hard conversations. If you don't, mm -hmm. I, would just, I would just caution you to make your first move a move of cutting someone off. Because you kind of become that person as a leader. Well, I can't deal with this, so I'm done. What does that say about you as a leader? Hmm. Really, what does that say? Does that say that you are the leader who anything time the going gets cut tough, we quit? Yeah. Yeah, that's that's not us. That's not our style. And good leaders, that shouldn't be your style either. Again, I'm not saying that getting people off your team isn't the best move. It can be. And when you've gone through and you've really dug into issues and they just can't see it the right way and, and right way. Not like my way is the right way. It's not what I'm saying, but they just can't see that they could potentially be a problem that it's everyone else and that circumstances are against them. And you know what, if, if they're not going to have that growth mindset, maybe they shouldn't be on your team. Okay. And getting them off the team could be the best move doing nothing uh, or maybe having a delayed when you do something is potentially an okay idea. Um, I've seen this go wrong by doing nothing sometimes allows it, Like if it's a toxic issue and it's a bad apple doing nothing can destroy by not dealing with the problem. You actually destroy really good things you have on your team and you don't want to see that happen. You don't want to see the good stuff that you've helped develop and the great team members, you don't want to see them fade because you are unwilling and let's just be real, afraid to do the hard thing. Got to lean into it. Now, when it, when can nothing be a good thing? Um, doing nothing could be a good thing if, <laughs> I mean, honestly, it's probably procrastination and I've seen procrastination work where I just didn't do anything and all of a sudden, 
This went great. They either changed or they just decided this wasn't a fit because they got to experience our culture a little longer. And our culture, I don't want to say can be vicious. It, It can be, but it's more like it lets everyone around it know whether they fit or not. And sometimes doing nothing can be a good slow play. Or if you intentionally, and I think this is maybe the better part is intentionally doing nothing like, hey, let's let's just give this time, see if it's more of a timing issue. Maybe we do a little bit of coaching on to, into the leader a little bit more and we'll see what happens. But I, I will say doing nothing has 10% worked great, 90% hasn't. Okay, so yeah. just know that doing nothing is doing something. Okay, and it it might not work out the best for you because that's not that's not a great hit rate for me. Um, the last thing, the digging into the issue, ninety percent of the time we just don't know what the real issue is. Like we said in the very beginning, we jump into this really quick and expect that we know exactly what it is, and we build the story out in our head, and we have confirmation bias that helps us continually see that the issue really is the issue and how dare they not respect me as a leader. Um, even though I look like I'm 10 years old, like (laughs) you just need to know that 90% of the time we don't got it. We don't have the right understanding here. We're projecting what we believe what the story is, but chances are we don't got it. Um, we need to, we need to dig in because we need to balance how much investment we're putting in. Now, as you're digging into the issue, if you are only always dealing and digging into the issue, there is a time that you maybe need to think, I don't know if we put another dollar into this issue that there is ever going to be a point where we're really going to see the return on this. Hmm. And I know um, people are like, how is this guy, the culture pull string doll? Like how, I don't know how he's that. If he just said that those words, Hey, a team is an investment. All the way around, it's an investment. And if that's the case, you got to see it as an investment in your team. You want the best for your team. You want your team to be successful. You want them to connect to the wins. This is not, it, not all of this is not a charity and it's not about doing this for practice. There is a point where we have to balance has this investment been way too much? And it's like the idea of a path, right? I really believe everyone can be on our path eventually, right? Like they could get to the path, but some people are really far away from the path and it could take days, weeks, months, years, decades to get to that path. And I, you just got to balance whether that's worthwhile of an investment to spend that long and to constantly be overdoing and overdoing things. Um, So you, you just have to balance that. That's your call. It's your call as a leader and you got to be the one to make it. Um, I I think a lot of times there's some of this that like, if this were my kid, how much investment would I be willing to put in? True. Um, Some people don't have parents that think that about them and that's a bummer. And I'm not saying that we can't have hearts and lean in. We should have hearts. We should lean into things that aren't easy. Um, but on the flip side, um, I think we tend to lean when it's not our kids and it's just company, you know, people on a team. We don't want to lean in because it takes any emotional investment. And we would rather not have that. Um, if you as the leader or other team member have problems with a person, I think we've got to come to a point where we're solution minded and not just issue minded. Okay, so you're the leader, you're having a problem child issue. It's easy to be like, here's the issue, somebody else fix it. Just pass it up the line, I'm not dealing with this person. Or a team member being like, hey, this person sucks, let's just get them out of here. No, guys, figure it out, dig in, do the hard stuff. Because if you can do that, you might end up finding out this was just a personality issue and this person is a great asset to the team. Yeah, I think about, um, I think the documentary was The Last Dance. Uh, it's the Michael Jordan documentary. I love Michael Jordan. I love the 1990s Bulls. Ugh, just, it was a great era. Dennis Rodman. Dennis Rodman was a 
flipping problem child if there was ever a problem child. My goodness, he leaned into and loved the idea of being controversial, causing issues. He would just he was just out for a whole week, like right up to the playoffs, I think, because he went to Vegas and just got completely blitzed. And I mean, it was just unreal how much of a problem child he was. He was a great asset to that team. And I I think Phil Jackson, the coach, was just brilliant in the way that he knew when certain things needed to happen in order to help bring the team better together. And believe me, I'm sure a lot of people wrote off Dennis Rodman. They, nope, this guy isn't going to work. He's not going to be part of our team. He's not, he's never going to fit in anywhere. He fit in there. Okay. He did. He wasn't like, he was not Michael Jordan. He was not Scottie Pippen. He was not Steve Kerr. He was Dennis Rodman. And he had a very different personality, but he fit the team and the investment was worth it. And so, so many. I love how I'm sitting here nodding my head as you're talking about this, um, making it sound like I know what you're talking about, even though I legitimately don't. <laughs> I know the names. I know the names. I know the names. Don't don't freak out. I know the names, but I don't know all those stories. Um, so anyway, um, so I love that you're talking about this story about Michael Jordan and Scottie Pippen and, and Dennis Rodman and all these other names. And I'm nodding my head like I know what you're talking about. I have no idea. Just going to be really Dude, clear. You don't know about the 1990s Bulls. I know them because I played a video game and they were my favorite team. And I don't know why. Because I honestly don't. Even, I mean, clearly, <laughs> clearly they were. <laughs> Um, I also remember catching shit for being a Bulls fan, and I don't even know why, um, but I did. Where'd you grow so, up? Uh, Pennsylvania. Pittsburgh, right? Actually, Philadelphia. Oh. Probably has something gosh. to do with it. My yeah. bad, sir. It's a difference. Okay, when we're talking football, it's a difference. Eagles and Steelers, you guys don't. We don't mix. Anyway, mm-hmm. all that being said, um, one of the things that... Um, I think we've talked, I know we've talked about this in the past is the concept of 36 (laughs) hours of pain, right? We just keep going back. This is just the go back episode, Um, but 36 hours of pain. And just a a quick refresh on that story. There was a guy who uh, had a, an individual who had started the company with him. He didn't fit the culture anymore. And this owner was just really struggling with letting, figuring out what the next move was for this person. And finally, after months and months of anguish, he just said, all right, enough is enough. This person can't continue to be here. They are destroying the team. Um, So he let that person go. And within a few days, he found out the other person was in a better position that was suited for them in a different company. Their company began to run smoother and better. It was better for everybody. Right. And he said, I wish I just would have done this earlier because I would have experienced 36 hours of pain instead of months and months and months of pain. Yeah. Yeah. It's just not healthy to draw these things out. It's not healthy for you. The stress level that you put yourself, and I'm saying you, you put yourself under, you make the choice to increase your stress by, by taking more time with this. It's not good for the other person either. If they're someone that needs that direction or needs that help to grow the next level, you're holding them back. Or maybe if they're the person that needs to be on a different team or at a different company, again, you're holding them back. You're not giving them the opportunity. It also gives you the opportunity. Time gives you the opportunity to grow angry and bitter at that person. And that's not helpful at all. Again, adding to your stress, adding to your difficulties. It just is a bad situation to let it continue to grow, to go on. It gives no clear path to that individual um, who's the problem child for them to continue to grow or correct. It just, mm-hmm. it leaves everything muddy and gross and nasty and stressful. Just don't, don't take the time that you think you need to do this because I promise you, you probably already know what the right next step is. Yeah. A lot of time we know what it is and we dismiss it and we go, you know what? I just need to sit on it. You were talking earlier about, you know, waiting only works 10% of the time. I think <laughs> waiting becomes our default mode though. Like we go, well, if I just wait, it'll work itself out. 
the number of times that problems have worked themselves out by waiting are so slim, it shouldn't even be our first thought ever. Yeah. Yeah. And that it kind of leads to the idea of like, what do we do with a lot of this stuff? Um, as good leaders, regardless of whether you're in a place of like upper management leadership or in the field leadership or leading one other person, I really am. I, I just believe so deep in performance reviews, whether that's a very formal thing or a very informal thing. You know what's so interesting about people who start teams early on who don't know a whole lot? The number one question I hear is, hey, how am I doing? Am I doing okay? Am I doing this right? Because they don't know. They just have no idea. They're trying to get feedback. We are afraid to give performance reviews because we're afraid of hurting feelings. Um, but giving good performance reviews, even if it's informal or, or whatever, is going to give you the ability to give corrective performance review where someone needs to do something else. If they're asking, am I doing well? And they're just pandering, looking for the, you're doing wonderful. And you say something like, actually, you're doing good at these things, but right here, this issue, I'm noticing it's a bigger problem. Hmm. You show up 15 minutes late every day. You're great when you're here, but I only get X amount of you. And having that conversation if they're just like, well, you suck, then they're not, they're not ready to learn. They're not ready to yeah. hear. They don't really care about the growth. They're just pandering to hear what they want to hear. And sorry, we're just not going to be that, right? So performance reviews are a really good idea. And I think everyone needs to be about them in many different ways. Yeah, it gives those clear expectations, right? I mean, when you mm -hmm. actually lay it out and say, hey, this is how you're actually doing, now you've taken all the muddiness and you've clarified everything. This is where we actually stand. This is where we, we believe that you are. This is how we see your actions. And now you're on the same page so you can start moving forward. And when you but don't you have to give those clear expectations. Oh, so, yeah. Right. Absolutely. So it's not just you're hitting something in that review. It's that you've had clear expectations as well. Yes. And you have clear expectations for moving forward. Right. Mm -hmm. Don't just get one half of the equation. You've got to get all of it. Um, and maybe you're in the review because you haven't had clear expectations in the past. Yeah. And this is sure. the time to establish it. Right. Those expectations are clear, are cl clearing. Wow. I'm struggling today, guys. Right, <laughs> Having man. clear expectations um, allows that individual for growth. Otherwise, mm -hmm. they have no idea where they need to head. And the yeah. goal really here is always to help them adjust or grow. It, it, that should always be the, the the goal. Help keep them on the team. And the only time that's not the goal is when they've clearly stated, I really don't want to be here, right? And you, you're you going to hear that too. You're going to hear, well, you know, I'm not really interested in this. Or, <laughs> you know, I just want to give what I'm giving right now. And that's about it. You're going to hear that. Um, and that's okay. That's when you go, all right, great. Good talk. Um, can I help you give you a referral to your next job? Um, or right. here, let's go ahead and part our ways now and just yeah. make it simple and easy. Um, it, it's, a, it's important to keep that moving forward. Um, make sure when you're having these conversations, and we talked about hard conversations a couple episodes ago, um, when you're having these conversations, put yourself in their shoes too. Think of how you would want to have this. If you're sitting on the other, other side of the table and you're the one being reviewed, how would you like to hear someone come to you with an issue? Would you like them? Would you like them to come to you and scream at you about something that maybe you don't know? Or would you like them to come alongside you and say, Hey, look, these are the areas I see that you need to grow. We set out these expectations and you're not hitting them. How are we going to adjust this? How are we going to fix this? Do you need help from me? Is this something you need to work on personally? That conversation completely changes the path of, or that, that mode really completely changes the, the mode of the, path of that conversation. Yeah. And more often than not, if, if somebody came at you and was like, you do this and you do this and you do this and you do this, your response would be, okay, show me an example. Like yeah. you're always late. Okay. Show me an example. Well, what do you mean? I mean, show me when I was late. This is, this is where I get salty. If you don't document it, it's not real. 
and mm -hmm. you have to document the hell out of issues that are happening in the field. You have to, because there's no evidence when you come to these hard conversations and deal with the problem child to actually give them something to show actually on this day, on this day, on this day, on this day. I don't even know why we, this is the first time we're talking because yeah, there are a ton of days that we have documentation about you showing up late, about you having an attitude, about you walking off the job site. Um, and you might think as a leader, you know, I'm not really the kind of person who likes to document things. I'm not that kind of leader. Um, you, you need to be that leader. Okay, sorry. Absolutely. Sorry if you're not. You need to be that leader because people need that and want that in times of issues, times of tension. They want to know the actual things that are happening. When you're in these times, another thing I'm going to say stay curious in your conversation when you're dealing with hard things with problem children if it is you do this and and it feels very you know frontal attack just be curious ask questions do they see there is an issue if they don't see there's an issue there's probably a bigger issue yeah. and if they can't see that they have any problem or any issue going on my guess is they're probably not going to make it on your team. Okay. They're not being sure. self-aware, which means chances are they're not really caring about their growth. And if they're not caring about their growth on your team, and I don't mean like from position to position, I just mean growth as people. Uh, if they're not caring about growth and benefiting the team and helping the team get better, then they're probably not the ones for you. Yeah. And you alluded to this earlier, keep those emotions in check, right? We talked about this previous episodes. Um, again, going back again, um, you don't hide your feelings and your emotions as well as you think you do. They actually hit your face a lot quicker than you think. <laughs> um, and we all, we all have this really big tendency to go, oh no, I can, I can put on this steel face. I can be, you know, whoever I need to be. It's not really true. Um, we, we tend to, to show a lot of what we say yeah. as we're saying it, um, and what we think. Um, and those raise the, the rising of those emotions just put people on the defensive. Like you were saying, it, it really yeah. doesn't put them in a place where they can learn and adjust. They're going to start closing off and pushing back and saying, hold on. Now you're attacking me. Yeah. That's so funny. I, uh, <laughs> it was either last night or the night before I was putting my kids to bed and kind of having that dad time to, uh, build into them and, you know, do all that jazz. And one of the things we were talking about posture and hmm. like how you hold yourself and stuff. And, um, it's funny because I was like, I said, your posture and how you hold yourself can portray something like, like you're talking about, we don't hold our emotions in check very well. So I like, um, my middle, actually I don't have a middle daughter, I guess. Yeah. I have a middle daughter. Um, anyway, she said, she was like, what do you mean? And I was like, like this, if I, I'm not going to say anything, but I'm just going to take one step. And I got kind of like puffed up and big. I was like, what are you, what am I saying? She's like, that you're about to hit me. And I was like, oh, <laughs> oh gosh, that's, I mean, how about I'm mad. <laughs> and yeah. She was like, oh, okay. Yeah. I was like, dang, you took it to the extreme. <laughs> that was fast. Don't hit my kids guys. <laughs> um, but, uh, then I, one thing I did was, um, I, I like pointed at my kid. That's all I did. I pointed at him and they said, I'm in trouble. And I was like, mm. huh, interesting. And then I, I put a slight smile on my face. I held out my hand with an open hand. And um, she said, she said, you're happy to see me and you're greeting me. And mm. I was like, yep, that's like, if a eight year old kid can pick up on those things, we are not hiding our subtle nuances of emotion no. at all. And yeah, those were extreme things, but she picked it up with no problem at all. Oh yeah. And, and you go like, I know I'm doing it, but you cross your arms like this and yep. you lean back. You're, you're just portraying that you don't believe somebody that you are skeptical of every word that they're saying. That's at least that's what I get when I, when I sure. sit across the seat sure. from somebody and I see that. Yeah. So now I'm like all well, focused on my posture. I'm like, yeah, I know, I like, right? As soon as you said posture, I was like, yeah. I'm slouching. I need to, I, to yeah. sit up all the way here and make yeah. sure that I'm keeping I'm my shoulders attentive. back. That's right. <laughs> being attentive. <laughs> yes. Guys, we've all got that problem, child. Um, it, it's how we sure. deal with that that really shows 
our growth and our mindset as mindset as a leader, right? We don't want to just jump to a conclusion and write them off or dismiss everything. Take the time to dig into what the real issue is because nine times out of 10, we don't really know. We've created that story in our minds of what is that person's problem? And usually it's much deeper than just what it seems like on the surface. Avoid being that person who says, oh, they're just toxic. Give them that path. Sit down, have a review with them so that you both know clearly where each person stands and what the next steps are. And as you're going through this, don't take time on it. Remember, you could get them off the team, you could do nothing, uh, or you could dig into the issue. Digging in the issue is going to be so much harder, but it's always worth the investment. And it's always going to keep your, your team cohesive and together and moving forward. Thanks for joining us this time on the Regional Line Leadership Podcast. See you guys next time.